Hi, I'm Heather Morgan, and I'm here today on behalf of Sales for Startups doing an interview with Brian Burkett, the VP of Sales at Lean Data Inc. And the first question I'm going to ask Brian today is, what are the differences between working at a large corporation or a startup when it comes to having and building a sales team? Hey, Heather, thanks for the intro. Uh, great question. So I joined Lean Data from LinkedIn, and uh, there are obviously some very big differences. I think for me personally, I like the challenge of sort of solving broader, less defined problems, and I think that's something that a startup offers. It also gives you the opportunity to potentially scale quickly and build something out of nothing. And so that's what sort of drew, drew me back to startup world. I mean, obviously, LinkedIn is fantastic, arguably one of the best places to work. But I think from my perspective, um, when you're refining a process, for someone like me, it almost feels like tinkering, uh, where I would you know, focus on bigger problems like, hey, do we even have a business here? Do we have a product that we can sell? Okay, how do we sell this? You know, how do we hire? How do we define a company from the get-go? That makes sense. And so you're so, more of the build from scratch guy. And so a startup's the perfect kind of challenge for you. Absolutely. So I think, um, you know, basically creating something out of nothing, you know, proving something out is really rewarding, even if it's just the initial sales or the first few reps or getting those initial first wins, I find really rewarding. Um, but, you know, I miss the days of closing multi-million dollar deals and having a team and every resource at my disposal. Yeah. But it's, it's fun to, uh, you know, build your desk, buy a phone, and then close the deals. For me, it's just as exciting, <laughs> even if the price doesn't match up, you know, or no one knows the name of the company you're working for. That's great. I think... Um... There's not a lot of people out there like that, but um, the few people I know like that, like uh, Max from Sales Hacker, they're awesome at what they do. So I'm glad you're in a place where you can do that. Thank uh, you. So moving to the topic of data, since you work for Lean Data, um, I'm wondering what are some of the biggest common issues with the quality of data for sales? So there's tons of data quality issues for sales, I think. One of the things that has a big impact that we all think about is like duplicate data. Mm -hmm. uh, and the problem with that is that if you have duplicates in your system, you can end up wasting the efforts of your sales team. Or worse, you can even create conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it always takes time to resolve those, uh, as well as it can sort of derail the reps when they run into duplicates. Another big data quality issue for sales is sort of expired data or out-of-date data. Um, you know, in today's world, people change jobs so quickly, so often that your data just expires so quickly. So some of that is you still want that data, but uh, when you're trying to uh, make calls or, or get in the door and the contact information is out of date or the person's no longer there, it's a big challenge. Another problem that most companies have is actually lack of data. Mm -hmm. And so for that, you know, when you're driving leads, um, you know, the first thing you want to do in Salesforce is route it correctly if you have more than one rep. Um, and if you're doing geo territories or segmenting based on size of company, you need that basic firmographic information to be able to route correctly. So most companies, um, you know, want to get leads in so they're capturing less data, uh, but it, it causes a problem for sales because we need to get that lead in the right hands of the person. Now, one of the things that, that lean data, we really think is a big problem, is sort of data within Salesforce without context. Yeah. And so we're trying to solve that problem, which is all about if a lead comes in, does that lead match a current customer? Is it already in the process? Does it match other leads? Or is it a duplicate? So our view is really that there's four types of leads um, going through that. We call them, you know, net new leads, duplicate leads, which are the same people, um, you know, lead to account matches, which are leads that match existing customers, and then accounts to be, which are leads that match each other, but they don't even have account created. And we think that if you can, we can simplify the B2B process by actually putting those leads into the context of each other, which will help the rep take the right action immediately. That makes sense. So how does that actually work with that process? Are you guys doing it all with algorithms and 
technology or do you also have like some manual cleanup or so so we offer a full suite of services our um sort of number one product today is a simple algorithmic view of matched of matched leads and accounts and so what we do with that is we can algorithmically take a look at all your system much like marketing automation mm. anytime a lead is created we can put that lead into context and then put it into a view that's digestible so for example when a new lead comes in a lead, uh, on that lead, you can see, one, if there's any duplicate leads, also if it matches into any current accounts. Um, and so we sit within Salesforce. Mm -hmm. So now the SDR, if they're working out of leads, doesn't have to do any searches to figure out what to do. They can see from the lead record that this is a duplicate lead or it's a lead that matches a customer or potentially an account with an opportunity. Then on the flip side, if you're in the account view, you can see all the matched leads. So today, if I'm a strategic rep and I want to map out my account, I can basically just see contacts unless I do a search for leads that match in. So I can, you know, with our view, you can see all the leads. And that's just an algorithmic sort of uh, software that plugs into Salesforce. We go beyond there to offer services if you want to take actions on those where um, it gets a little bit more advanced where we may have to verify if that's an actual dupe and you want us to merge it. Um, so we offer, we offer both, right? So we have simple sort of algorithmic software approaches, and then we have the ability to go beyond that and offer services to take some of these very manual processes off your plate uh, and, and complete them uh, with a high fidelity. And so when you are doing the, the outsourcing, um, how is that working? Is that, are, are you guys actually using a team of outsourced workers yourself or just again technology? So um, we actually have a team of sort of data quality experts that are oh, outsourced cool. um, that we can push a very, very small percentage of your data to if we need to make calls. So for example, on a duplicate lead, if Robert Miller from HP matches into Bob Miller from Hewlett Packard, today humans can look at that very quickly and decide that that's the same yeah. person. Algorithms can't do that. Yeah. So what our algorithms can do is find all the other matches and then identify that this might be a fuzzy match. Um, and then from there, we would involve the data quality experts. But honestly, like our algorithms are getting so good that we can solve most of this algorithmically, about 90% of it, without having to do that, that verification through the outsourced data quality analysts. And then probably after you do the data quality, you can kind of just take like a sample size and see roughly how much might be outdated or inaccurate using yeah, I mean, we, we do that all sort of ahead of time algorithmically. Uh -huh. We only, um, if it absolutely needs human verification, will we do that? We try to solve, you know, everything with, um, you know, algorithms uh, at first, but we realize that that's not, uh, it doesn't work for everything. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, when you can, keep your costs low, of course. Absolutely. So with Lean Data's own sales process for selling your product and your service, what does that look like? Yeah, so you know, we really believe that you know, our services at Lean Data really support account-based selling and account-based marketing. So um, what, we're totally aligned around that as well here. So my team uh, of AEs is focused on penetrating a set target account list. Um, that we've identified, you know, target accounts are ones that we think have a high propensity to buy. And we're aligned with marketing to go after those accounts. So marketing is driving leads within those accounts to come in. Now my AEs are working out of accounts and contacts within Salesforce so that they can take, we know that we have a somewhat complex sales cycle. We need to, a lot of times we're talking to sales ops, heads of sales, and marketing ops. Um, so it's really beneficial yeah. for them to see everyone across an opportunity and not just work a single lead that's out there sort of floating by itself. So what we've done is we use our lead to account view so that my reps can work out of accounts yet see all the leads that marketing is driving mm -hmm. so that they can take action and decide to potentially convert them as well. We're also constantly, um, you know, we joke here. We're our number two customer. We work with a very large customer who's our number one, and then Lean Data is number two internally. So we're constantly um, getting our system cleaned as well. Um, 
and so we have people working on that. And then we're excited about our, our next product, which will be account-based lead routing, which we'll have as well. Um, so we're, you know, we're all about, you know, we believe that for us to sell it, we need to be the leaders in this as well. So we're excited to sort of define and um, sort of pioneer this account-based uh, lead processing. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like you guys are dog fooding a lot, <laughs> which yes. is great. Um, so you mentioned account-based lead routing. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. So um, you know, for example, in our in our world, uh, we're a pretty relatively small sales team, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my next step is to add a layer of an SDR to um, take that piece off and do. You know, Aaron Ross would probably be upset, but I'm going to combine outbound and inbound response, um, you know, as we scale. And so um, what we're doing is... Um, and is that because you feel like your marketing and sales kind of have this, like, synergy where they can overlap and combine with the sales? Absolutely. So, so one of the reasons is because we're so focused on our target accounts, um, my reps actually have... Um, named account lists that they're going after. We've gotten rid of sort of the geo territories. Okay. And so what happens is because marketing is driving leads for companies that we already have accounts for, um, what happens is that um, the new leads that come in will get processed by the SDR, but also be shown through the view um, so that the reps can take action. So there's a lot of visibility. Yeah. We have our, our my reps have full visibility into every lead that matches into their account, as well as you know obviously every contact. And so, how do you kind of a lot since you're not going by territory, re, like geo territory? How do you decide what reps are getting what? So, uh, so this is account based lead routing, right? So oh, if yeah, a lead, yeah. so if a lead comes in and matches into one of our named accounts, okay. that lead will get routed to that uh, AE yeah. rather than go through a round robin and potentially have someone else. And then when we have the SDR, that lead will actually get routed to the SDR that works specifically with those reps. But like if, it, if it's not in there, then I guess you would be right. deciding so that, that a new... So this, this is sort of the secret sauce is if the, if the account is not in there today, we have to figure out, uh, you know, we use our rules to figure out which AE would get that account. Okay. Uh, and then the lead has to, it, it could get created and, and converted into a contact on that account. Okay, that makes sense. I was just wondering if it's not already there, how that would work. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and then today, I mean, we'll, we would probably, if it's, we have a pretty good idea of what's out there. So if it's not there, we may have that lead, if it's a net new lead, uh -huh. try to qualify first by the SDR and then sort of round robin that to the rep, to an AE, if you will. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a really interesting system. I think uh, not everyone would be able to architect and execute something so complex, but I think it sounds like you are able to, and it's very effective. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's sort of, in a way, the idea is simple, right? Yeah. You have an AE and an SDR line. Any lead that comes in for an account should get routed. Right, yeah. but today you see organizations that geo route leads, yet accounts AEs are working yeah. a named account set. So why wouldn't you route those leads to the AE and the SDR that are teamed together? People have been patching that together and trying to make that work. We're fortunate that we've sort of figured that out, so I don't have to worry about that. I know that every lead that comes in that matches into a named account will get routed correctly to that team. What? That's great. So. Moving um, beyond that, what are some uh, other areas that you're looking to tackle in 2014 with Lean Data? So I think, you know, for us, we're still an early stage startup. That's I mean, true. for us, it's all about new customer acquisition uh, and getting as many logos as we can. So I think we're, you know, although we have the potential to offer a lot of sort of enterprise services, today we're leading with some of our our better packaged, more complete algorithmic only products like the lead to account view. Um, so we're sort of in, you know, high acquisition mode. We want to get our customer list growing. 
Um, and I think it's at a startup, it's like one step at a time. Yeah. So we're going to go out and get as many customers as we can. Uh, and then hopefully by the end of the year, we can prove that we have an acquisition model that scales, is repeatable. Uh, and then the next layer is, okay, it's time for the upsell, right? Yeah. So uh, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have shown that we have a high propensity to add new customers and the ability to upsell them into some more expensive services and products. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Well, this has been a wonderful interview, and I really appreciate you for taking your time, Brian. Um, this is Brian Burkett, the VP of Sales of Lean Data, and I'm Heather Morgan for Sales for Startups. Thanks, Heather. This video has been brought to you by Sales Folk and Sales for Startups. Visit us at salesfolk.com and salesforstartups.org. Thank you.